Hello, everybody. I'm trying to pull up my Bible verses. Okay. Um, okay. So, I hope you're having a great day, whatever day it is. If it's, if you're listening to this right now on a Monday, happy Monday. If not, happy whatever day of the week it is. I hope you're having a great day, a great week. I hope you continue to have a great week. Um, a few weeks ago, we started a, we started a study on, a series on, um, relationships. It started with being single, um, and today we're going to talk about literally my favorite thing ever to talk about, which is relationships. I, ever since a young age, have loved love. Romance movies are my all-time favorite. Like, I just, I love hearing about love. I love talking about love, anything that, that has to do with it. I just love it. So, I'm very excited to talk about this today. Um, this past summer, my boyfriend and I met two days a week to do just Bible studies about what we have learned in our, like, individual Bible time. And I started to spend a lot of my time in podcasts, but specifically in the Bible and um, listening to sermons. And there were about two or three sermons that I listened to that I was like, whoa, this is like good information. And I took very thorough notes. This was July 5th at 12.08 at like right after midnight. So yeah, these, I mean, I love, like I love these lessons so I hope that you guys get something out of it the way that I did. I'm going to try to cultivate the words in the best way possible, but, you know, I'm not the, I'm not the best speaker. So I can, if you, if I don't do a good job and you want to listen to what the guy was saying, then I can definitely send, find the links and send them to you. But I'm definitely going to do my best. And yeah, so we're talking about relationships, more specifically healthy relationships today. Um, alright. Also, my notes are right here, so if I look over here a lot, that's because my notes are there. And I'm going to use my phone for my Bible app. So, here we go. Um, starting off, social media cannot be the bar for a relationship. I think a lot of times, you're like, oh my gosh, look at this couple. They're just so perfect together. Like, they're always so happy. And, of course, on social media, everyone's going to look happy all the time. You're never out there to post the bad moments in life. Social media is kind of like a highlight reel, genuinely. You don't post a picture if you look bad. You don't post a video if you don't sound good in it. Like, you always post something to portray the best side of you possible. And that's the exact same in relationships. You're never going to post the fights. You're never going to post the tears if you're crying. I don't know. You're only going to post the good times, the cute little date nights, the happy, funny moments together. And while that a lot of times, hopefully, in a healthy relationship is what the relationship is you know the happy moments there are still negative um times in relationships so social media cannot be the bar for a relationship if your goal is to end up like a couple that you see on social media you're only seeing half of what they really are okay so you have to keep that in mind um you can't set expectations of this perfect side because You might get that side, but you're also going to get the other side that comes with it. Um, Your standards should be made in the Word of God. I mean, I've said this time and time before, but the Bible is our book of instructions. It is what God has given us to learn how to live our lives, to reflect the life of God. Um, And so, you know, God designed relationships starting all the way back with Adam and Eve. Adam was alone and... God didn't want man to be alone, so he gave him a woman. So man and woman came together and had a a relationship. But um, whenever it comes to relationships, definitely diving into the Bible, seeing what it has to say. I'm going to read to you Isaiah Isaiah 48, and it says, The grass withers, the flowers fade, but the word of our God will stand forever. And I love this verse because, I mean, it's saying, Society has shaped our culture so much. It's so different than it was before, you know. Now it doesn't have to be a man and a woman getting married, even though that is what relationships are in the Bible. It's what is rooted. It's man and woman coming together. That is not the case now in society. And there's so many things that have completely 180. The norms of what a relationship looks like is completely different. But this verse is saying, you know, all those things are going to change. Everything is going to completely change. Everything is always moving. Um, But the one thing that will never change is God's word. 
So whatever it says about what a relationship should look like, that is what a relationship should look like. It's not what your TV is saying. It's not what TikTok is saying. It's literally, it's everlasting. It will never change. So I love that verse. That applies to so many different things. But in this instance, it's very insightful. Um, if you understand the Bible's principle of a relationship, you wouldn't have to question if they're the one based off um, of their life. So, okay, sorry, my mom called, so I had to pause. But I'm back, and I'm getting right into it. Okay, um, the pastor that I was listening to, I, I need to look up his name. He's so, so good and just, like, easy to connect to. But um, he said that he almost lost his relationship because he was basing his standards off of culture's principles and not God's. And I'd say that's so many people, especially at the age that all of you are at right now. Um, I see. I, when I was in high school specifically, saw that a lot um, based off what culture and what the norms were. Not at all based off what God says. And it is sad to see, especially if you know someone and love someone in that kind of relationship. So, you know, you want to set yourself up for success. Basing someone or basing a relationship off of what God says is key to that. Um, your greatest enemy is not sin or Satan. It's ignorance. That's when they get in control. Ignorance is huge when it comes to relationships. I think people desire to be in a relationship so bad that they forget why they want to be in a relationship. Maybe they just, maybe it's, you don't want to be alone anymore. Maybe it's just you want to talk to somebody, honestly. But whatever it is, a lot of times people don't center it off of love. They center it off of themselves, what what they want in the moment. Um, ignorance is the same, basically, as darkness. And this, um, John 8, 12 says, Again, Jesus spoke to them, saying, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. So, if ignorance is darkness and you're living your life in ignorance, then the way to get out of that is to turning to the light. You gotta turn to the light, which God, Jesus, I mean, that is the light of our lives. So, in a relationship, if you're doing things selfishly, if you're giving in to temptation or whatever that could look like, if you're dating for all of the wrong reasons, you turn to the light, turn to God, and He will guide you through that. Um, he, I mean, He can do literally anything, so I think that's very important. Okay, sorry my mom texted me and I got nervous. Um, so yeah, you cannot have a happy life without having light. Imagine you lived in a house that no lights turned on. You could never leave it, no windows or anything. Pure darkness. It'd be a pretty sad life. If you had light, your life would be better. If you had Jesus, if you leaned on Jesus and took his word, your life, your relationship would be better. Keeping him in the center makes the entire difference. Um, the biggest point that I want to make is is about a list. And he, the, the pastor, talked about this almost the entire time and it was, it was amazing. We have a list in our heads of um, physical attributes that we'd like our um, boyfriends to have. We have different things for, like, I want them to be athletic. I want them to be funny. I want them to come from a good family. Like, all of these different things. I know you have a list. You can't say you've never thought about what you want in a man. Um, there's different things. Um, you want them to get along with your family. I mean, that's a huge one. But I'm going to tell you right now. Think about your list and completely rip it up because it does not matter. Obviously, standards. But if you have your standards and if you hold yourself to a high standard, that, risk, that list is going to be completely useless because God already has our person planned out. Um, it's what's in our minds. Our list is what's in our minds. But that if we focus so much on this and we have to check every mark off of this, we're going to completely forget about the fact that God has someone for us. If we're so focused on getting all of these things. We're going to go to whoever we can time after time again until we get the right person. But to get the right person, you have to trust God, not yourself. Um, where does the list come from? I feel like society has a lot to do with it. And even your upbringing. I mean, to me, something that I felt like was huge was if the person that I started dating was like a huge Tennessee football fan. 
and I'm not kidding. Like, I genuinely thought that was, like, a really, really big deal. My boyfriend's an Auburn fan, and it doesn't matter. Like, I I promise you, in high school, I was like, I could never date someone that's not a Tennessee fan, because I grew up such a big Tennessee fan. That is such a superficial way of thinking. If you're saying this person has to be this and this and this, you got to think, like, if a guy was doing that to you, like, oh, she has to look this way, she has to act this way, she has to be like this, it'd kind of be hurtful if you didn't meet those expectations. So you're putting, like, a false reality out there. Um, a lot of times when you get into a relationship and you're like, okay, this is my perfect person. They look the way that I want them to. They do this. That's perfect. And then you dig deeper. You're not service level anymore. You're in this relationship. Uh, you kind of get a little, like, frustrated or angry sometimes when your list doesn't look like the person anymore. You know, you discovered that maybe they don't like everything that you like and maybe they were kind of sweet talking to you just to get into the relationship. Uh, whenever you put so much faith into this list of the things that you want, it's it's kind of a recipe for disaster. He has this equation that I've got to find because it's so good. Um, but he says, fabricated expectations. So basically our list, the things that we feel like we need to have in a person, these fabricated expectations, plus the failed realities, which is what you're going to get in a relationship. If you have to have these expectations, you're going to get failed realities, and that's a, that equals frustration. Um, you're putting such high expectations on a person who doesn't have to have these expectations. And then whenever they don't know that they that you expect all of these things, it's going to cause you to be frustrated and them to be confused. And then that does not end well. Your list for you will never look like God's list for you. Um, he has everything that you need. You're thinking of everything that you want which I think makes the biggest difference. You know, you think of like, oh, what do I want for Christmas? You're never going to put like, I want to keep my home. I want to have a roof over my head. You already have those things. So you're not thinking, oh, like I, I want that for Christmas. You're thinking, oh, I would like a new phone or I would like all of these things, some, some nice clothes. You're thinking about what you want in the moment, not what you need forever. Um, I think, I love, he said that God's lowest thought of you is higher than your greatest, than your greatest thought of yourself. And I think when you think of that in terms of a relationship, a lot of times people put themselves out there just for anybody to take. And if that's you, I pray that you just think about yourself so much higher because you deserve to be thought of higher. If you think of yourself as like, well, you know what, whoever, whoever will date me, I'll date them. That's not, not a good mindset because you're not going to find your person that way. But you got to think, like, God designed relationships. He already has your future for you. You have to trust in him, but you have to know. He thinks of you so highly that, you know, I think of myself, like, right here. Say this is the best thought of me. I'm like, wow, Olivia, you're doing good in life. Um, God would be like, wow, Olivia, you're doing great in life. And your future is so much brighter than you even know. So that is super important to remember. God is more committed to your destinies than to your desires. I'm going to read to you Psalms 37.4. <clears throat> it says, Delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the, the desires of your heart. Um, key in this though is he's not going to, if you're, if you are focused on him, if you are devoted to him, if you are living your life to Christ, he will give you the desires of your heart. This is not saying you can live your life, you can go party every night, you can go do all these sinful things that you think is okay and you'll, you know, ask for forgiveness later. That's it, it doesn't work like that. It's not, you have to give your life to Christ. You have to put him first and he will do the same for you. He will work mountains in your life. He will move mountains, literally. I, I think it's crazy because I feel like I've been super blessed my entire life. Genuinely, I have always been very appreciative for what I have. But whenever you your eyes are open to the reality of what God has really done, it puts a whole new perspective. It is crazy. I'm like, wow, God has brought me to a place where I can teach people about him. And before, like, I, I would always talk in my Bible studies, but I would never, like, lead a lesson. But here I am now because God moves mountains and he uses you for everything, which is not related to relationship. I just feel like you have to remember that, I mean, God will um, give you the desires of your heart, 
as long as you give yourself to the Lord. Um, another way of looking at this is when everything I have is in the Lord, when everything I think is in the Lord, when every decision I make is based off the Lord, then God will give my heart what it is supposed to desire. If I'm out here desiring sinful things, if I'm lustful and all of this, he's not going to give into that because it doesn't need to be given into. But when I'm out here and I'm genuinely striving to be more like God every single day, then he will feed me um, in that sense. Um, you have your plan. I think everybody has a plan. I am a planner, so I know for a fact I have a plan. But God has your purpose. And that is that is just amazing to think about, you know. A lot of times people struggle with what their purpose is. But knowing that God has always got your back, He already knows what is going to happen in the future. He has your purpose. And one day you're going to figure that out. Um, but in a relationship, you know, don't ever put yourself to a lower standard. Because in God's eyes, you are perfect. You are love. The verse, oh my gosh, I can't think of it off the top of my head, but it says, real love is patient, does not envy, it is not boastful. Um, be patient, be love, be patient. God is patient with us, and um, whenever you're thinking about your future, you should be the exact same way. Um, another point real quick before I end is what you're looking at is going to influence your relationship. What you do in your free time is going to influence your relationship. Um, you know, I think that's why a lot of people say like cheating were to happen in a relationship or anything. It's based off of a lot of times outward desires, nothing that um, relates back to the Lord. I'm sorry, my charger is bothering me. It's like uneven. Um, I listened to a Sadie Robertson podcast and she, her and her husband talked about this and he gets very open and honest. And I think it's really cool hearing a guy's perspective on stuff like this. So um, you can just scroll on Spotify, Apple Music, YouTube, I don't know. And they talk about this quite a bit. But he says that um, whenever he got serious about wanting to be in a relationship, he cut out all kinds of stuff in his life. Like he stopped watching movies that could be seen as inappropriate or could put lust in his heart. And when you're preparing yourself for a relationship, when you're genuinely serious about finding your future, which might not be now, but it might be now, depending on where you're at in your relationship with Christ and just with yourself. Um, but he said he cut out that because you need to guard your heart. And that is just very, very accurate in a relationship. If you want to be your best self to um, be your best self in a relationship, you have to guard your heart. And it's hard when society is telling you all of these other things. Um, but at the end of the day, it all goes back to the word. If you're genuinely um, engaged in the word, it'll come a lot naturally. So that's just about all that I have for you guys today. Um, I feel like this was longer and I hope it made sense. <laughs> it makes sense in my head, but sometimes it might not in yours. But if you, got, if you need any clarification, if you're confused about anything, if you want to talk about anything, have any struggles going on, please text me. I'm always open to talk. And now I'm not even in school, so I would be super happy to meet up with you, whatever you need. So yeah, um, love you all. Hope you have a great rest of your week. Goodbye. Mm.